Hello again, incoming pharmacy students. This is once again, Brandon Stevens coming at you with more pre-matriculation pharmacy math concepts for you today. Um, in the last video, we talked about, you know, ratios, rates, proportions, all those kinds of things, kind of introduced the concepts, did a few problems with them. Um, and in this video, we're going to expand on those concepts, basically just do a bunch of problems with those concepts, see how they're used inside and outside of the pharmaceutical field. So let us go ahead and get started with that. Let me share my screen, go over to my PowerPoint so you can actually read the question. So I'm gonna have three. So again, rates, ratios, proportions, how are we gonna use these? And it all goes back to this idea of proportional equations. It's all gonna center around this kind of idea. Um, so throughout your math career, you've probably dealt with equivalent fractions, right? So if we have the fraction two thirds, for example, two out of three, we have different ways of expressing the same ratio, the same proportion. Um, and we can do that by just multiplying or dividing the top and bottom of the fraction by that same number. So let's say two thirds is the same as if we multiply both of those numbers by two, well, that's gonna give us four sixths. And these two fractions, two thirds and four sixths are actually the same number, the same value. Because what we've done by multiplying by two on top and bottom of that fraction, isn't gonna change anything. We're really just multiplying by one, right? Two over two is just one and multiplying by one doesn't change the value of a number. So two thirds and four sixths, even though the numbers look different, really mean the same amount. Two thirds is also equal to, let's multiply by 10 on top and bottom. Well, that's gonna be 20 over 30, another equivalent ratio, equivalent fraction. So two thirds, four sixths, 20 thirtieths, you can find an infinite number of fractions that all mean this same value. We're basically gonna do a very similar thing with this idea of proportional equations, basically figuring out what number needs to fill in a certain slot. So for example, we could have something like 2 thirds is equal to x over 15, right? So we have these two fractions, that we want to say are equivalent, are equal value, where we know one of them, in this case, we know the denominator of that fraction, but we want to know what's going to be on top of that fraction. Now, in certain circumstances, we can find out what is being multiplied to the top and bottom or divide, of course, to the top and bottom to figure it out. In this case, we can see that both of them need to be multiplied by five because three times five is gonna get us 15. We need to do the same thing to the top. So two times five, that's gonna mean our top has to be 10 in order to make those be equivalent. Other times, it won't be so clear. We won't have a clear multiple essentially happen between these two fractions. So another way and a very common way that we kind of deal with that problem is to cross multiply. So if you've heard of that term, essentially we're just going to basically multiply in a cross fashion. So multiplying the bottom of one fraction times the top of the other and doing the same thing for the other way. So in this case, we've got two times 15 is gonna be the same as three times X. And then from there, it's just a simple algebra problem, right? Two times 15, well, that's gonna be 30. And that is equal to three times X. And then if we want to get X by itself, solve for just X, we need to remove that three, it's being multiplied, so we divide. Divide by three. And that's gonna get us that X is 10. So we can see that either way we do it, we get to the same result. The cross multiply method is going to be useful in more circumstances, but if you can easily find that multiple, that way is also equally valid, that first way that we did. So now that we kind of have that idea of proportional equations, let's see a couple ways in which it is used um, with all of these ratios and rates and proportions and all that. So we talked about percentages um, a little bit at the end of last time and a little bit about calculating with them. 
So let's say that we wanted to find 15% of E. So when we talked about that last time, we just said, well, change 15% to a decimal by moving the decimal two places to the left, so making it 0.15, and then multiplying it by eight. And then 0.15 times 80, and I need to get my calculator, uh, of course, is 12. And that would be 15% of 80, and we just leave it like that. The reason that works, and the reason why we can do that, is similar to the idea of proportional equations. Right, 15%, if we were to write that as a fraction, is 15 out of 100. And then 80 is the total number that we want to know what 15% of it is. So 80 would go on bottom and X would be on top. We want to know what over 80 is 15% or 15 over 100. And you can do that same kind of cross multiplication method and you're going to end up with 12. Now notice if we change that wording around slightly and replace that proposition with or, or of, of with is 15% of something is 80, that really means that we want some number of which 15% yields us 80. So we can set up this kind of equation of 0.15x is equal to 80 and divide by 0.15, or in another context, use that kind of proportional equation where we have 15 over 100 or 15% equal to 80 is now the 15% and we need to know what the bottom is to make 80 equal to 15% of that number. In either case, we can divide by 0.5 or do a cross multiplication method. We're gonna get around 533.5. But that is what it rounds to. So it's a very slight distinction, a very small word that is changed there that really changes the meaning. And it goes back to this idea of proportional equations and figuring out which one corresponds with the 15, which one corresponds with the 100. So that's kind of an interesting thing to kind of see percentage-wise, why that method kind of works. Let's apply this to pharmacy. So let's suppose that we have a particular chemical with a certain concentration. In this case, 8% uh, is the concentration of this chemical per liter of fluid. And we end up with four liters of the total fluid. We want to know how many liters of the chemical will be utilized. So one way, of course, would be to set up that proportional equation. Or we could just say we have 8% or 0 0.08, right? We just move the decimal two to the right or two to the left, excuse me, filling it as here. And we have four as the total amount, right? It's important to kind of realize, is this number the total amount or is this the subsection of it, corresponding with the little chemical that's being added? This is the total amount, so we're doing 0.08 times four. And if it helps, we can set up that equation, eight over 100, and say that four, right, is that total solved for x. Both of these ways are going to be equivalent ways of getting that your answer is 0 0.32, and this is still in liters, right? Because our first thing was in liters, so multiplying it by 8% is still going to be in liters. And there we go. That would be how to use this concentration to figure out exactly what amount of a certain chemical would be utilized. And again, if this was 8% per liter of fluid and this four liters was of the chemical, we would just divide by 0.08 instead to get the total amount of liquid being used. So that's an interesting kind of way to look at it. Let's look at some more examples of proportional equations with scaling. So scaling in basic terms is just saying like, we have one amount of substance, we need to like double that or triple that. Um, and we can see that in a lot of contexts, one of my personal favorites is baking because I have a sweet tooth and it's just great. Uh, so let's say we need two cups of flour to make 12 cupcakes and we've got a bake sale that we really need a bunch of cupcakes for. We need to know how many cups of flour do we need to make 96 cupcakes instead of 12. So the way we can set it up now 
is by basically just setting up equivalent rates, right? This is saying two cups of flour is equal to 12 cupcakes. Of course, there's other stuff that goes in there, but these are the only two things that matter, the cups of flour and the cupcakes. Since this is an equivalence, we can set up a rate. And we can say that two cups, and if you want to, you can say of flour over 12 cupcakes. And that would be our rate of flour per batch of cupcakes, essentially. Now, we need to know how many cups of flour, so we don't actually know what it is, but we know we need 96 cupcakes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an equivalent rate where cupcakes is also going to be on bottom, right? We want to make sure that we match up our units well, like have the same unit on bottom, the same unit on top. So 12 cupcakes goes to 96 cupcakes. And so two cups of flour on the left side, we don't know how many cups of flour, so we'll just call that X. Oops. And then we can solve it right like normal, right? So we know that it's gonna end up eating cups of flour, so we just cross multiply, everything works out. So we got two times 96, which is 192, is equal to 12 times x. Here we can kind of ignore the units because we know it's going to be in cups of flour, um, but if it helps, you can leave it on. Uh, and then divide by 12. And get that x is going to be 16 cups. We can also see that. 12 cupcakes for 96, we're multiplying by eight. It's like eight batches of cupcakes. So two times eight is gonna get us to 16, um, would be another way to kind of look at it. We basically used this kind of scale, this kind of similar equivalent fraction, just to kind of get us to where we need to go. Let's do another example. And I've got a couple that will be used in this kind of pharmaceutical context. So let's say we have two tablets contain 400 milligrams of compound X. Uh, and we want to know how many milligrams of compound X are found in seven tablets. So again, we have this kind of equivalent thing, like right? two tablets is the same thing as 400 milligrams. So we just go ahead and set that up. And notice we can write it either way. We can put 400 milligrams on top and two tablets on bottom or vice versa. It doesn't matter as long as our units match between our two fractions. We know we want seven tablets, so I'm going to put seven tablets on bottom, and we don't know how many milligrams, so I'm just going to call that X. And then we just cross multiply. Four. So we have two X is equal to 400 times seven. Two X is 2,800. X is going to be 1,400. Simple as that. It's just as easy as figuring out what that ratio is that you need and then setting up your equation correctly, making sure that your units match on top and on bottom. Next problem, an oral liquid formation of a drug contains 60 milligrams per 20 milliliters of a drug. How many milliliters are needed for 720 milligrams of the drug? Well, here, it gives us that ratio right away, right? So we can just write 60 milligrams, for 20 milliliters. We're given that we have 720 milligrams. Notice that the milligrams is on top on the left side. So it's gonna go on top on this side. And if that bothers you, then make sure you just flip it on the other side. You can do 20 milliliters for 60 milligrams. They're equivalent, it doesn't matter as long as everything matches up well. And then we have X milliliters. And we just cross multiply again. You see a pattern. <laughs> 60X is 720 times 20, 14,400. And we end up dividing by 60. We get 240 milliliters. Same idea of equivalent ratios of just making sure everything is set up, everything matches, cross multiplying, solving, you pretty much get into a rhythm with it. Really, the hardest part is just making sure that 
you have all your ratios correct and that you're calling things equivalent when they really are. Because sometimes, sometimes problems will get a little bit lengthier and a little more complicated. So you'll need to make sure that the rates and ratios that you're given, the equivalents that you're saying, are actually equivalent. Let's do some more examples. One of the biggest uses for this kind of ratio rate kind of thing is for unit conversion. So we want to know how many days are there in 15 weeks. And that's all we're given. But we have outside knowledge, right? We know. There is a relationship between these two things, days and weeks. Particularly, there are seven days in one week. This right here is a rate, right? These two things are equivalent. We can write a rate that is the same. So we can say seven days is the same as one week. And we can set that equal to something over 15 weeks, right? Yeah, 15 weeks on bottom, we want to know how many days that is. Voila, we have yet another proportional equation. And notice, this one's actually really easy. We don't even need to do all the cross multiplying things, because notice, this is one week on bottom. So we can figure out easily what we have to multiply by to get our answer, right? Because what times one is 15? Well, it's 15, because anything times one is itself. And that's why unit rates, uh, I mentioned last time, are so particularly important because you can easily find this common multiple to carry this multiple that you need to multiply by um, in order to get to our answer. So we're just going to multiply by 15 on top of the bottom. And it's going to tell us that x is going to be 15, 7, which I believe 105 days, 15 weeks. And it will either feel like two weeks or two years because time is a flat circle. And there we go. That's how simple the unit conversion can be with this kind of concept. You just, you have some kind of relationship that you have between your two units that you set up and then you set up in another fraction uh, and fill in the spot that you do now and just figure out, solve for the other. And here we have a couple more unit conversion problems now kind of in that kind of pharmaceutical context. So 2.2 pounds is equivalent to one kilogram. How many kilograms does a patient weigh if they weigh 160 pounds? So we are you know, given that kind of equivalence there, right? The 2.2 pounds is equivalent to one kilogram. So we can go ahead and set that up as that rate right there. So I always like to put whatever's one on bottom, but again, it doesn't matter. Whichever one goes on top, bottom does not matter as long as both sides of the equation match. So I'm going to put 2.2 pounds over one kilogram. That's our first equivalence. And we set this equal to, we know our patient weighs 160 pounds. And since it's pounds, that's going to go on top of our fraction on the right. And we need to know how many kilograms that's going to be. So we'll just call that X. And that's going to be the number of kilograms. And then from there, we've got our proportional equation. So we just do our little cross multiplication. So we do that. Uh, obviously here, our unit rate isn't set up exactly how we want, right? You can't just multiply one times X. I mean, basically will work out to be that way. Uh, but we can just say 2.2 times x is equal to 1 times 160 is still going to be 160. So it's still made a little bit of the math easy, um, just not as easy as like figuring out multiply by both top and bottom by 5. Um, but we divide by 2.2. And we get x is going to have to be 160 divided by 2.2, which is around, I should say, 72.72 kilograms. Good. There we go. That is how many kilograms our patient weighs if they weigh 160 pounds, just based off of setting that proportional equation up correctly. Uh, and then we have another problem. So a patient injects 0.3 milliliters of insulin each morning, and it only costs them $7,000. Um, how many units of insulin is that? Uh, if 100 units of insulin 
uh, is one milliliter. So we've got our rate already kind of given to us. It's pretty uh, convenient there. Um, so we'll go ahead and set that up. So 100 units, and you can just remember that's units of insulin, or you can write that if uh, you would prefer. Um, and that's going to be the same as one milliliter. So that's our first equivalence, our kind of baseline equivalence ratio there. Uh, and that's going to be equal to our other ratio. And we've got 0 0.3 milliliters, but that's going to go on bottom of our fraction so that our milliliters, you know, are lined up as we want. And we want to know how many units of this. So we have just X units because we don't know how many units that we'll have there. And here, now our one is matched up with a number. So thankfully we can just say, oh, just multiply by 0 0.3 because that'll create the same bottom on both sides, which is what we're ultimately going to want. So basically X is going to be 100 times 0 0.3, which is in fact 30. So the second one, unit rate worked out really well. We happen to be looking for the other, the top part of that unit rate. First one didn't happen to, but as long as you take the time and set that proportional equation up correctly, you'll be able to see clearly uh, whether that's going to be the case. Okay, let's go to a different type of example now. So let's work with ratios a little bit. And again, we're going back to baking because apparently I was hungry when I created this presentation. So a particular recipe of bread has a flour water ratio of five to three. How many cups of flour are needed? So 32 cups of this solution of flour and water. So remember when we talked about ratios last time, we came at it with this idea of like part to part kind of thing. And so this five to three, notice the five corresponds to flour and three to water. So it's like five cups of flour means three cups of water. So five cups is equal to three cups of water. And we'll say those are the only two ingredients in this solution, just flour and water. That's a U, I promise. How many cups of flour are needed for 32 cups of the solution? That's the important part, right? Of this solution. So it's not 32 cups of flour. It's not 32 cups of water. It's 32 cups total. And so since these two things don't have anything to do with the solution, we can't just say five over three is X over 32 or five over three is 32 over X. What we have to do is say, okay, well, if these are the two ingredients here, then the total number of cups we could use if we just wanted one batch, so to say, would be eight cups, right? Five cups of flour, three cups of water, and we're good. So what this means is we have the same equivalence of five cups of flour to eight cups. We change it from a part to part dynamic to a part to whole dynamic. And now we have the equivalence that we need. And so we can say five cups of flour over eight cups total. And we want 32 cups total. And we don't know how many cups of flour. And it still works out to be just this proportional equation, right? So we got 32 times 5 is 8 times x. So 8x is 32 times 5, which is 160. And we divide by 8 to get that x is equal to 20 cups. Flour. That would be our answer. So we first change that part to part to part to whole dynamic, and then have that equivalence there to set up that ratio correctly. Okay, one more question. Now put this ratio in this kind of pharmaceutical context. So we are we're adding six grams of an acid to 69 grams of a base. How many grams of the acid are used in 450 grams of the total compound? So again, we're just assuming we got acid and we got base. Those things are being combined. Since we're talking about the total compound, we need to come up with total compound, right? 
So we have six grams to 69 grams. So in total, this is 75 grams in one batch of this particular compound. And so we can step up this kind of proportion of six grams of acid to 75 grams of the total solution. And then set that equal to, of course, 450 grams total. That's a five. And we have no idea how many grams of acid that's really And then solve the like before. So yeah, six times 450. So 75x, 2700. And we can divide by 75. So you get x is 36 grams of x. That's our final answer for this particular ratio. And there we go. So those are some particular examples of using this idea of proportional equations, equivalent fraction, those kinds of ideas in problem solving. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more context. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to, again, take a look at this proportional equation and yet another context, which is the metric system. So stay tuned for that.